Getting a dermatology specialty training interview is difficult, but in this video, I'm going to teach you on the process of applying to get an interview and tips and tricks on being shortlisted. Hi, I'm Dr. Irma Derma and I'm a dermatology registrar working in the UK, and I've also done my interview fairly recently. So the first step is applying for a dermatology interview. The dermatology interview is a national process, which means that you can't apply to specific regions. For example, if you want to train and work in London, you can't just apply to London. You need to apply through a national interview process. Do your interview, then rank from highest to lowest on regions in the UK on where you want to go train. And then judging from your points from the application and interview, it then allocates you to regions in the UK. The theory behind this is to make the process fair and equal to all candidates. So to apply through the national process, you want to apply through Oriel. So the website is oriel.nhs.uk. Now there are two rounds for the application opening times. The first round opens around February time for March interviews to start to dermatology training in August. And the second round opens around August time for the December interviews to start to dermatology training in February. For more information on the exact dates, you can find this on the Physician Higher Specialty Training Recruitment website and go onto the dermatology section and then click on the interview dates and post. From there, you can see how many training numbers there are in the region and when applications are open to submit your evidence and when the interview dates are. So you might be thinking, what are my odds of applying and getting a training post? To help you guide this prediction, you may want to check out the most recent application ratio from the previous years. So just go on the Physician Higher Specialty Training Recruitment website on the Dermatology page and under the data section, click on the application numbers, post numbers, competition ratios section. And you can see in 2023, in round one, there were 241 applications for 32 posts, giving you a competition ratio of seven and a half to one post. 75% of those applications only apply to dermatology. Round two have generally fewer posts. So generally the competition ratio is higher, but don't let that put you off on applying for dermatology because it really does depend on your application points. Which leads me on to the next section. What does your application get scored on? So on your application form on Oriel, it will ask you a number of questions. So it will ask you your commitment to the specialty, postgraduate qualifications, prizes and distinctions, quality improvement projects, publications, teaching and leadership. You would first need to self-assess on how many points you think you scored and submit your evidence online. And then an assessor usually looks at the evidence supplied and see if this matches with the score that you have given yourself in each of those sections. So the maximum amount of points you can achieve is 48. And each section has different amount of points. So going through each section in detail, if we look under the applying heading and going on to the application scoring section, Physician Higher Specialty Training Recruitment website again, under the commitment to specialty, so they want to find people really committed to that area, even if they haven't had specific placements in it yet. They're trying to be fair by giving a chance to those with lower evidence scores, but a strong commitment. They also want to weed out those who seem to have no real reason for applying. The goal in the early assessment is to shortlist as many good candidates as possible for the next stage. The scores at this point don't directly affect whether you get the dermatology training post, but they help decide who gets invited for a more detailed interview. The interview is where they dig deeper into your commitment to the job and use that along with other factors to make their final decision. So if we go on to the postgrad section of the application scoring, if you had any PhDs, this would give you four points, whereas other postgraduate diplomas or postgraduate certificates between one to 10 months will give you one point. 
And if you want to submit evidence for this, you need to show your qualification certificate. So upload your qualification certificate on that online portal. The other one is any other additional achievements. And this is where your prizes and honors are usually mentioned. So you usually get three points if you have any distinction on or, or honours in your primary medical qualification. The other ones are if you have any prizes in any other areas of your course. And you want to submit evidence, usually a letter or certificate from the medical school or organiser which confirms the award. And the other section is MRCP. So if you have passed your MRCP, which is part one, part two, and PACES, then you'll get eight points. But if you have passed part two MRCP UK, you will achieve two points. But if you pass PACES, but not part two, you'll actually achieve six points. And for evidence, you would need to upload your MRCP UK certificate or a letter from the relevant college. In terms of presentations, giving an oral presentation in a national or international meeting will give you seven points. So national and international meetings are like the British Association of Dermatologists Annual Meetings or EADV. And in terms of publications, if you are a first author and is PubMed cited, then you'll actually achieve eight points. The lowest amount of score is if you have published but they're non-peer reviewed and they're not PubMed cited, then you achieve one point. Teaching is one section as well. If you've worked with local tutors to organize a teaching program, for at least three months, you'll get six points. In terms of quality improvement, the maximum amount of points that you can have for quality improvement is five, and you need to complete all of the two cycles of the QI project, and you have to be the one who led the QI project. In terms of leadership, if you've held a national or regional leadership for six or more, month and it doesn't have to be a medical associated group or leadership place it can be if you're for example leading a football team nationally or charity scouting guides or any other creative arts in a national or regional level and the lowest amount of points that you can achieve in the section is two and that's if you've held any local leadership or managerial role within a medical school or any other charity scouting guides or sports so i need to add that you can only mark yourself in these categories for example if you have held a national leadership role and you've also held a local leadership role the higher points would be counted. So you can't add these two together and say, oh, I got six points. Um, no, you only have to go with one or the other. I would strongly suggest to go on this website and read everything in more detail. The link would be in the description box below. Okay, so you've done your self-assessment scoring. You may be wondering how many points does it take for you to get that interview call? To give you a rough guide, it's best to see the data from previous years. So if we look at the shortlist score distribution in 2023, when we look at this graph, so there were 89 applications that went through the shortlisting stage. The shortlist scores range from the minimum 28 to 48, and the mean averages were around 40. The previous round to that in 2023, the number of applications proceeding to the shortlisting stage was 206, and the minimum amount of points that someone scored was zero and the maximum was 48. And the average score was around 34 to 36 points. And the previous year to that, the average score was around 33 to 37 in 2022 in round two. And the previous round in 2022, the average score was 34 and 36. So the scores are increasing year by year. So if you are scoring around the 36 to 40 range, then you have a very high likelihood of being called for an interview. But if you feel that your score is lower than this, please do not get disheartened by this because the assessors may actually score you highly and you may be underselling yourself. And you never know, you may actually get an interview because it really depends on the cohort of people applying. So my personal advice is work smarter, not harder. So tailor your efforts towards these points, but do try to go for the higher points if possible. So try to achieve the maximum amount of points with efficiency. For example, do not publish 12 non-peer reviewed research because this will only score you one point try to be a co-author or publish a peer-reviewed article in PubMed. Similarly, 
If you're going for a PhD and you have that mindset, oh, I'm only going for the PhD because it'll give me a lot of prestige and it gives me a competitive advantage. But look at the time and effort ratio to the points because you'll only get three points. And if you neglected everything else on your application, that may actually hinder you for being shortlisted for the interview. Similarly, try to achieve something in each of the sections of your application scoring. For example, if you don't have any postgraduate certificate, try to go for a diploma. Try to go for a diploma that would give you the least time to complete and is efficient. So if you can find any one month diploma, then definitely do go for that. As you can tell, it is all about playing the game. And speaking about playing the game, it's really important to actually enjoy the game and not get bogged down and have a terrible time just for some points on an application. So try to enjoy the process or try to fit in what you enjoy with one of these application boxes. Because when it comes to the interview time, you will really shine through if you actually had a positive experience by going through all this. And obviously this would be very beneficial for your mental health. And of course, don't lie in your application. Try not to make any fraud documentation in your application and not to over-exaggerate your achievements. Because in the worst case scenario, this will become a poverty issue and assessors may report you to the GMC. The least case scenario is that you'll just get scored down by your assessors and you may not get an interview or it will just reflect poorly in your application. But on the other hand, don't try to undersell yourself as well. Because if you do score yourself low points when you actually should have scored yourself higher points, you may not get shortlisted for an interview. So it's all a balancing act. But don't get disheartened if you don't get shortlisted for an interview. You can reapply again for the next round because there are two rounds in the year and just see where you can increase your points next time. Plenty of people apply over and over again for dermatology specialty training. So don't feel that you're the only one. But if you're feeling that this process of becoming a dermatologist is not for you, then you may want to check out my other video on how to become a dermatologist in the UK, where I go through other options of practicing as a dermatologist in the UK.